What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the full set of the bee armor the fastest in small land survive the wild. Now this took me just under one hour and two in-game days. Technically, I went to the third in-game day just so there was good lighting for the video and you could see everything that I was doing. Now you are watching a sped up version of what I was doing. So let's talk about what you need to do first first off when you start you need to collect absolutely everything and really focusing in on wood because you will need a lot of wood for this run i use arrows quite a bit in this run and the arrows are something that i feel like are a necessity because i'm not going for the other armors i'm just doing this in the traveler's outfit so i didn't craft any armor early on to help me mitigate damage you're also going to need a lot of fiber for bandages because you are going to be healing from the damage that you're taking. Now you could choose to craft armor if you want to right in the beginning of the game. You don't have to rush this like I did. You could slow this down as much as you want. I wanted to see how quickly I could actually get to the B wings and the full set of B armor. That's why I didn't waste any time going after the different armors at the beginning of the game. It was really just kind of a speed run and a challenge for me. The real key is just following along in the steps and getting the resources that you need in order to craft that be armor. What you do in the meantime or what you do before going after this is completely up to you. This is just the most proficient way that I found to get this bee armor and have it really early game. Currently, we're on the island where the owl statue is. Now, we're not going to run up to that. We're going to run around the backside. And the reason for that is there's some enemies that you want to fight on the backside of this island. There's also a lot of wood and fiber on this island as well. So you're going to want to grab all that. The first thing you're going to want to kill is one of these red ants. Now, you want the mandibles to drop. The first one didn't do that for me, but there are other red ants up here. There's also a beetle, and I get into a little bit of a squirrely spot here where I'm taking too much damage, and I have to run away. Anytime you can make it outside of leash distance of the enemy, that will allow you to have some room to heal up. So I highly recommend doing that. And you're going to see me take things outside of leash distance quite a bit in this video where I'm actually able to continue to do damage while that enemy is leashing back. I do this quite a bit with the lizards once I get to that point. Now there's a damselfly that flies around the upper area there. You're going to want to kill it because it drops more wings than most of the other winged creatures. There's also a damselfly down below where the lily pads are and you're going to want to kill that as well. If you get lucky, these two damselflies can actually drop six wings wings in total, meaning you only need another four wings to craft that armor piece. So the resources that we're looking for in this run are three bee heads, 30 chitin, 15 textile patches, five herp leather, and 10 insect wings. Now, if you've watched other guides, you know that the textile patches are the hardest part of this entire thing. However, I'm going to show you how to totally skip going to get the silk and making those textile patches. So the spot that we're coming up to now is an important spot. You have another chance to kill a red ant for a mandible if you haven't got it yet, but you also have this rye here and you want to make sure that you harvest all this rye and then we're going to build the pickaxe and we're going to get some of this rock here. We need 10 stone to make the stone cutter, and then we need the refined wood to make the different weapons and the tannery that we're going to need later on in this video. So once you have the stone and the seeds from that area, I recommend turning the seeds into the seed oil and then changing those to the refined wood. Now it's time to get down to the beach. Make sure you have food and all your bandages crafted before we head down to that area because you don't want to get stuck in the middle of a lot of these enemies and not have those things already crafted and already ready to go. Something to keep in mind is I am going to be sponging a lot of damage in this video because I didn't make any of those early game armors. I'm literally in the travel set, which doesn't give me any resistance to the damage that's incoming. So if you're having a hard time with this or you feel like you just want a little bit of extra comfort, make sure you make that initial armor. Now this section I do recommend just running through because there are five or six wasps that spawn in there. It's really weird. It's strange. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't. 
but you want to get down to this point then you can drop down to the beach area there is a water bug and a lizard right here if you can get both of their attention at the same time you can actually make them fight each other meaning you don't have to fight one of them you only have to take on one i use the wasp that's in this area as well a little later on in the video to do some damage to one of the other geckos but I think anytime you can make two things fight in your stead and make your life easier, that's the way to go. Now I do set a spawn point here just in case I end up dying in this area. I don't want to have to run all the way back down. Something else that you should know about this area is it had a lot more flint before the recent update. So you are gonna have to travel quite a ways down this beach to get all the flint that you need. That's okay because you actually need to kill all these lizards or all these geckos on your way to get enough herp leather. Remember, we're looking for five herp leather. And then for the flint, we want around 30 flint. You wanna get right as close to 30 flint as you can. I think I ended up with 29 in this run, so I had to do things a little bit differently. If you end up with all 30, you can craft the obsidian sword and the obsidian spear as well as have enough flint for your tannery later on. Prior to the update that reduced the amount of flint that was in this area, I wouldn't have even bothered with this wasp at all. It now guards one of the flint that you need without having to go way out of your way to get the last bit of flint. Now you just want to continue down this beach. There's one more gecko in the area right in front of me and it is guarding two obsidian nodes, but we also need to kill it for its herp leather. This is a good example of taking it to leash distance. You can actually tell when it reaches leash distance, it'll stand there and kind of curl its head up. Once it does that, it's going to head back to its spawn and I just continue to do damage to it with the arrows and that makes it much easier to get in and finish it off with melee. And as you guys know, you can see I'm freezing right now because of the storm. I really don't respect the storm all that much. I'm not in the padded armor. It's really easy to get out of the storm. It's also easy enough as long as you're not fighting to stay in the storm. It really doesn't do that much damage as long as you're watching your health. So there's a dragonfly here. There's actually two. We're going to kill those again for wings. That way we make sure we have enough wings when we get to making that armor. So kill these two dragonflies that are down here if you need those wings. If you don't, you can totally ignore them, but that should give you enough wings. You can also get the last bit of flint there, and then it's pretty much time to head back and head off to our next section, which is going to be getting the chitin for this armor. At this point, I'm just going to run back to all my crafting stations, my little makeshift base, and I'm going to build the flint spear. The reason why you want the flint spear in this case is because it does a lot of damage to the beetles, and at this point, that's what we're going to focus on killing. We're going to head off and kill some of the green beetles because they drop the most chitin in this area. The green beetles have a chance to drop up to three chitin, so you want to be killing these. They do hit rather hard, especially if you're not in armor, so I recommend making yourself a respawn point. It doesn't seem like I was close enough for this guy to leash to me, so I have to wait for him to come back down and actually fight him with full health. So that's okay. It takes about four heavy hits with this spear, so you should be okay as long as you go up against them fully healed. And at this point, we're basically going to backtrack, killing all the green beetles and all the Sawyer beetles that we see on the way back. So there's another green beetle here. Do a little bit of damage with my bow right up front. That's kind of my standard way of doing things. And then just get in there and finish it off with melee. Remember to keep yourself repaired and have a lot of bandages on you because you need those for healing all of this damage that you're going to be taking. I'm really not doing a great job of getting out of the way of damage as much as just taking the damage and dealing damage at the same time. Now, technically, at this point, you could veer off the path. You could go up to Drastana however you want to, and you could just get the rest of the resources that you want going that way. However, the way that I'm showing you to go is going to give you the better amount of the chitin. It's also going to give you the opportunity to kill the damselfly again if you don't have enough wings at this point in time. 
At this point, you're probably also dealing with some inventory management issues the same way that I am. Look at what you have, figure out if you can get that to stack another way, and then make decisions on what you may have to drop or what may not be useful at this point in time. You could also decide just to make a chest, set it down, and come back and retrieve it later. My personal opinion is just drop the stuff that doesn't matter at this point and continue on. I know that some of you are going to have an absolute conniption about the fact that I'm dropping things, but that is my gameplay style when I know that I can grab that item at any point in time, or I know that I will have a ton of that item later on. I simply leave it on the ground and I'll pick it up at another point. So at this point in time, you should have at least five of the herp leather, 10 of the insect wings. If you're a little bit shy on insect wings, that's going to be okay. You need to have at least 10 usable flint for crafting the tannery. And then at this point, you should be looking for bee heads and chitin to move forward. Again, remember, we're not going to worry about the textile patches, and I'll show you how to get those once we get later on in this video. The other thing that you'll continue to see me going after is the seeds. That way I can make the refined wood. Some of that refined wood you're going to get with the textile patches when I show you that, but it's good to have this handy so that you can make the flint sword once you get to that point. The tannery costs 10 refined wood and 10 flint, so you don't want to make the flint sword when you need either that wood or that flint in order to make that tannery. Once you make the tannery and you convert your leather, you can use that wood and that flint to then make your other weapon. Now we've just reached the 30 chitin that we need, so we're going to avoid all the other beetles on our run back. We don't need to kill any more of those because we don't need any more chitin. Now, if you were only going after the bee wings and you weren't going after the full set of armor, you can make those wings with just 12 chitin. So it's really up to you, depending on how fast you want to get the full set of armor, is how many of those beetles you're going to kill and how many of the chitin you need in order to do this. You guys probably remember this spot from earlier on. I'm going to stop and get a seed, then place the tannery and swap my herp leather. At this point in time, now that I have the herp leather, I no longer need some of those resources for that tannery. So I can actually turn that into the sword. And I did that right here. That way I can do more damage to things that need that edge damage when I'm running back. And this really all should look familiar to you because we ran through this section already. We've been past all of these areas. We're just backtracking to get to Durstana. Now, if you need wings, again, there should have been a damselfly that spawned here. And there's another one up by the owl if you need that. However, you should have enough wings at this point in time to just continue on to Drastana. So at this point in time, you're going to want to do a last minute inventory check. Make sure that you have three bee heads, you have 30 chitin, you have the five herp leather, and the 10 insect wings. We're just a short way away from where Drastana is. And there is a few things that you can kill in these areas for the chitin. You can kill plenty of bees in this area if you don't have the bee heads. But if you don't have the herp leather, you have done it all wrong. And you're going to have to go back to the beach to get the herp leather. You can also get wings up in this area, but the bees don't drop as many as the damselflies do. But if you only need one or two, you're okay to go up into this area. We've reached Dristana and I'm going to sleep just to make it day again. And then I'm going to show you how to get the textile patches as well as how to get the full set of armor really, really easy right here, right now. So you should have all those things in your inventory. You're going to equip your build hammer and you're going to break these four different items in this area. Once you do that, you'll be able to get your regal plate. Those four items that you break will drop six textile patches every time you break them. So there is a way for you to get the entire set right here, right now, but it does require you to log out and log back in with a different character. So choose a different character, log back in, and then run in and break those four items again. 
All you have to do is break those four items one more time, and then you'll be able to throw those items in a chest, go back and log out again, let your other character log back in, and get those items out of the chest. Once you log back in with your other character, all you have to do is grab those items out of the chest, and then break two of those items again in Drastana's area, and you'll be able to craft the entire set of armor. Now, it does not work for you to log out and log in with the same character. It has to be a different character. If you're doing this on multiplayer, you will have to end the session and then log back in in order for those things to respawn. Now, for the record, I don't know that this is intended. This could get patched out of the game very quickly, but at least for now, if you don't want to deal with spiders, follow this guide in order to get your full B armor set. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next, and I'll meet you over there.